fantastic things on a Friday evening at 7. You do not want to miss out on what's happening with the Kingdom Dreamers, the young adults, the young at heart. You are all invited because we are all young in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So just to remind us of the membership forms, if you believe that this is where the Lord has planted you, if you believe that this is where the Lord has led you to become a part of, because we're not in the business of stealing sheep. If you believe this is where the Lord has planted you and you know that you know that you know within your heart that Tam is your home, we have membership forms to sign up. See any one of the ushers to the front there. We want to make it official. We want to make it official. So see any one of the ushers. We have forms to the front. And those of you that have taken forms, please bring them back in. All right? Tam family. So if you want to get a form, see any one of the ushers to the front. And if you have forms at home with you, feel free to bring them back in. We're going to extend this for one more week. Amen? All right. So we're going to go into our offering this morning. 2 Samuel 24, 24. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. It's... A very familiar passage of scripture. It says, But the king said to Arona, No, I will certainly buy it from you for a price. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God, which cost me nothing. So David purchased the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. David is described as a man after God's own heart. He would not offer to God something that cost him nothing. So many of us from time to time tend to think differently to David. We give what we wouldn't miss. And sometimes this is why many of us can't see the blessings of the Lord that we, see, that we speak and sing of. We must realize that giving of an offering is not just something we do by chance or something that we just talk about or something we just do to take up time before the word comes. It is a part of worship. And we must realize that giving of an offering is something more than just putting your money into the basket. As a child of God, we should do what our father does. And because he is a giver, we ought to be givers. And in the word, it is mentioned in Luke 6, to give, and it shall be given back unto us. And it is a direct command from God. So we need not to worry about the amount or if we have enough. God will reward your obedience. God will reward your obedience. And in Luke 12, 24, in the Amplified again, it says, Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap. They have no storehouse or barn and yet God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the birds? God loves you. And he understands and knows what you have need of. His possessions exceeds all that we can even imagine. And he has more than enough in store for you. And he is more than able to provide for your every single need. So I encourage us this morning to know who your God is, know who you are in him, and respond to his call and command to give. Why? Because he would reward your obedience. Amen? Let's all stand as we give this morning. Yeah, yeah. Put your hands together. I feel put your offering.
can't you do? What can't you do? What can't you do? Jesus, Jesus. So I saw some of the kids went up already, but the rest of you all, you can make your way up to Sunday school. All the kids, all the kids, all the kids, make your way up, walk, walk, walk. <laughs> all right, so let's make some declarations over our offering this morning. And it says, I am powerful, and what I believe changes the world. So today I declare, God is in a good mood. He loves me all the time. Nothing can separate me from his love. Jesus' blood paid for. Yeah. I will tell nations of what he has done. I am important. How he made me is amazing. I was designed for worship. My mouth establishes praise to silence the enemy. Everywhere I go becomes a perfect health zone. And with God... Nothing is impossible. You believe that today? Let's keep our hands going as we welcome Pastor Kirk this morning. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus again. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's thank God for the worship team. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Great job, man. Awesome. And happy Mother's Day to all the moms in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Before you have your seats, 
Just share some elbows before you go down. Amen. sure my mom is watching, on, watching online, so I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Doreen. Amen. Praise God. One of my favorite days. One of my favorite days. Because I get to wish all the moms happy Mother's Day. I was blessed to have an incredible mother. Amen. She's been awesome to her kids and many of the things that I'm going to share this morning um, are characteristics that I see in my mother. And so I pray that um, that all moms will be encouraged this morning. Amen. And moms to be. Amen. All right, so I'm going to look at... Um, Seven characteristics of a wise mother. Um, and it's taken from the book of Proverbs, um, chapter 31, which talks about a wise mother, a virtuous mother. And Proverbs is a, a very important book because it's a book of wisdom. And the Bible says that wisdom is what builds the house. So your life should be built wisely. Amen. Amen? God wants us to be wise. He doesn't want us to be foolish. So it's important for us to have wisdom in our life as we build our lives. And the book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. You know, the first nine chapters in, um, in the book of Proverbs um, it's, it's pretty much a, a, a poem, the first nine chapters, and from, from, from chapters 10 to 30 are, are wise sayings, which, which are wise principles that we should live by. And it ends also with a poem, which, which is in um, chapter 31, and we're going to take a look at uh, uh, verses 10 to 28, or verses 10 to 30, actually. So let's look at this and uh, pull some stuff out of, of this um, wise woman that we look at. Now, I just want to say um, also, even though I'm talking about a, a wise um, woman or a wise mother, I want men also to pay attention. Amen? Because wisdom is needed by everyone. Amen. Amen. Wisdom is needed by again. With the Bible says wisdom is what builds the house. And you being the head of the home should ha increase in wisdom. Amen. So you can build your home wisely. Amen. So let's, look, let, let's, let's begin. Um, well, let's look at chapter, Proverbs chapter 31. Let's start from verse 28. It says, her children raise, rise up. And call her blessed. So you see again, it's talking about a mother, right? Her children. They rise up and, and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. So this is what it's talking about here, a wise woman. And we see here that, um, that it begins here, and it does as good of the verse 10. Um, it says that, that she fears the Lord. So now let me say this um, in verses 9, um, chapter, sorry. F the fear of the Lord 
is the beginning of wisdom. Right? And she has that fear in her. She fears the Lord. It's not like she's scared of the Lord, but she shows the Lord reverence. Amen? She has made the Lord her God. And because of that, she is wise. Um, look at, look at uh, Proverbs 9 and verse 10. guys get it there. It says, who can be a virtuous? Proverbs 9 and verse 10. Yeah. If it's not there, I can just read it out. It says, an Did you get that one? Okay. It says the fear of the Lord. Hey, can you put it back up. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. A knowledge, a knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Amen. Sorry, I didn't give you that one, right? My bad, my bad. Okay, so let's jump right into this. Now, the first characteristic that we see in a wise mother is this, is that a wise mother knows the priority is to her husband. Let me say it again. A wise mother, her priority is her husband. Let me say this to all, them, to, to, all, to all the wives that are here. Your first ministry is to your husband. Not a lot of amens, but that's why I'll try that again. That's, that's what she's, just in case you missed it. Your first ministry is to your husband. Right? <laughs> you see, that is why her husband calls her blessed. Because she made him number one. Amen? Your husband is going to call you blessed if you're not number one, if, he, if he's not number one. Because he doesn't want to be number two. Pun intended, right? <laughs> Amen? you, you got to make him number one. Let me say this, guys. There is a divine order that we should live by. Amen? Amen? And the example is this. Let me, let, let me show you this um, here. It, it says that, that, you know the Bible says, Seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God, his kingdom, and then everything else will be added on to you. What is he teaching us here? He's teaching us here that in the kingdom, there's an order in which we live. There's a first, there's a second, there's a third. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And when you get that divine order into your life, you, you, you get divine blessings in your life. Divine order brings divine blessings. And this wise mother, she put her husband first. See, we, and I, I've realized that a lot of families, we make this mistake and we put the children first. And when you do that, and I'm not saying you should not love your children, but they must fall within the divine order of where you put your priorities. You should love your kids, but it's, the, the kids are not the number one priority as far as your ministry, as far as where your love goes in the home. It should be towards your husband. And when that divine order is, is implemented in the home, then everything falls in line. The divine order will bring the divine blessings. Amen? 
So we do, I want to encourage you guys, don't make that mistake. Look at, look at verse 10, Proverbs 31 and verse 10. It says here that the fear of the Lord is the beginning, sorry, 31 and verse 10. Sorry. But it's an excellent wife. Now, you probably, wouldn't, probably did not get the translation that I sent. All right? But that word virtuous there in the New American Standard Bible is the word excellent. Right? It's the word excellent. And it says an excellent wife. And let, let me just stop there. She is not a perfect wife. Amen? She is an excellent wife. In other words, excellent talks about a journey. It talks about something that you are pressing into. Amen? It's not perfectionism. It's you moving from one stage to another. It's you not settling to remain the same. That is a spirit of excellence. When you, when, you, when, you, when you are not satisfied with where you are in the Lord and you are pressing in to, to come into maturity, you're pressing in to become that person that God designed and purposed you to be. That's excellence. And we see that in the life of Paul, you know, where, where it mentions um, in Philippians chapter 3. Look at this, look at this. And Paul shows us that, that he had a spirit of excellence. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 15, he said, Bedrin, do not, I do not count myself to have apprehended or have reached. All right? But one thing I do, one thing, say one thing. One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and I'm reaching forward. See that? I'm reaching forward to those things that are ahead. He's not settling for where he's at. Right? He said, I press towards the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 15. He says, therefore, let us, as many are mature. How much of you guys want to be mature? How many of you guys want to walk in maturity? He said, as many as are mature, have this mind, have this way of thinking, have this mentality of what? of having an excellent spirit. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal this to you. What he's going to reveal to you? The importance of having an excellent spirit. And the, the, the importance of having a mentality that you're not settling to be where you are. You know, one of the greatest problems of the church is that we have accepted partial transformation. No, God wants us to move from glory to glory to glory. Amen? Don't settle for partial transformation. Keep pressing towards the upward call, which is in Christ Jesus. This is what this wise woman had. She had an excellent spirit. Amen? She had an excellent spirit. You know, even God's name is called excellent. Look at Psalm um, 8 and verses 1 and 9. Pushing it up. It's going under my chin. Thanks. It said, Lord, our Lord, how, how what? Excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Look at verse 9. It says, oh Lord, oh Lord, how what? Excellent is your name. His name is excellent. <laughs> Amen. So God. That is what God wants us to have. He wants us to have an excellent spirit. And that is what a wise mother is going to have. She's going to have an excellent spirit. She's going to be an excellent wife. Amen. So it's a journey. 
It's a pursuit. And this means that, and this means that you're not satisfied with where you are in the Lord. Amen? So she's pursuing maturity and excellence. And it goes on to say, go back there to, um, to verse 10. Proverbs 31 and verse 10. It says, who will find a virtuous wife or an excellent wife? For her worth is far more than rubies or jewels or, 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 or money. Amen? <laughs> now, that's a funny toilet came back. A memory. I was playing around with India recently and she said, ah, how do you want me to be romantic? I said, give me all your money. <laughs> I was just joking. I was just joking. Guys. I was just joking. But let me tell you guys something. An excellent wife is worth a lot more than money. Money will not make your marriage great. It would help but it won't make it great. And we see that in the world. We see that in the world. Look how many celebrities, those rich, those, those rich guys, how, they, how many times they're divorced and, you know, they've had terrible marriages. Most of them, actually. Most of those celebrities. So, so if money was the answer to a happy marriage, they would all be happy. They would all be happy. So it's, it's not the answer. It's not the answer to a happy marriage. Actually, I rather ha- I rather be poor and have a happy marriage than to be rich and go through all the pain of an unhealthy marriage. Amen. 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 So she's worth more than jewels. She's worth more than rubies. An excellent wife. But look at verse eleven. He says here, the heart, of her, the heart of her husband safely trust her. Safely trust her, for he will not lack, he will have no lack of gain. In other words, he has no worries. Why does he have no worries? Because he trusts her. He trusts her. Let me tell you guys something. Trust is the foundation of a great relationship. You have to become a, a wife. You have to become a mother that, has, that, that, that can be trusted. And why can she be trusted? You know why? Because she put him first. The moment you don't put your husband first, it brings distrust into the relationship. And if there's distrust, the relationship begins to break down. Because trust is the foundation of, of a successful relationship. So this is why you have to put him first. Amen? Why? The trust is built when he knows he is numero uno. That's for all our Latin audience online. When he knows he's number one, he feels that he, he's being trusted. There's trust there. The moment he becomes number two, it's problems. He feels like number two. (laughs) Right? He has to be number one. And then trust is developed. Amen? Look at verse 12. It says, she does him what? Good. She's good to him. And not evil. How? All the days of her life. So you're looking at a covenant 
commitment towards her husband all the days of his life. She's good to him. You know what that means? She's good to him when things are good, and she's good to him when things are bad. That's commitment in being good to your husband. You know what that tells me? That she was operating with the love of God. She was operating with the agape type of love, which is love unconditionally. You see, conditional love is going to break down that relationship. Well, I'm only going to be good to you when you're good to me. Then you're not a wise woman. And I want to say this. This is why if you're here this morning and your spouse, uh, he's, not, he's not serving the Lord. He hasn't given his heart to God as yet. If you love him unconditionally, the Bible says by your chaste behavior, he is going to change his heart. You can change your spouse. You can change the life of your spouse. If you love him, if you respect him, it didn't say by your words, it says by your chaste behavior. By the way you live, by doing good to him all the days of his life, he's going to change. Do you know it's the kindness of God that, that, that leads men's heart to repentance? Yeah. Be good to him. Oh, let me say, say that different. Be good to him. Amen. Be good to him. All the days. Unconditional. Amen. Amen. Point number two, a wise mom serves her family. A wise mom serves her family. Look at verses 14 and 15. It says, she is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night. In other words, she gets up early before sunrise and provides what? Food for her what? Her household and a portion for her maid servants. So we're not talking about, we're talking about this woman had some wealth and she's also She's not staying in her bed. She's getting up, not just for her kids, but she's also getting up early to set an example for her servants. She wants to serve. She serves her family. It says she's like the merchant ships. You know, in those days, you know, there were a lot of ships that would travel great distances, right, to, to, sell, what, to sell goods and to, and to do trade. In other words, she is willing to go the distance. She's willing to make sacrifice to serve her family. Amen. When I think of my mom, wow. My mom made sacrifices. Oh, my God. I mean, she raised me up, so that's a huge sacrifice. I was an issue going somewhere to happen. Right? I mean, I, mean, I remember even going to Bible school. And my mom would be working, and we, we, we couldn't work while we, were, while we were in Bible school. Amen. And she would work there in New York, even through the winter months, the cold, cruel months, you know. And she would send money every month to us so we can have food, so we can, can do stuff while we were in Bible school. And not only that, while she's doing that, she's helping raise my, my sister's kids. I'm taking care of my dad. That was my mom. She sacrificed to provide for us. And it's just one instance. Now I'll tell you something. Indira is a great mom too. I see her. I see her, her beautiful daughters here with her this morning. And she just flew in. What, what was it? Friday. 
She went on a week vacation, surprise vacation. Right? She wasn't planning for it. Her, her uncle um, uh, made, made, it a, made a way for her and her dad um, to, get, to, to go for a week vacation out in Florida. And some miracles along the way, right, Mr. Rangasami? <laughs> All right? <laughs> but what Thais does, what, let me just build, show this the whole picture now. But Thais is in the process of buying her first car. You are, right? <laughs> You're looking like. Yeah, she's in, so, you know, so, so her, you know her, she, she's working hard. She's saving up her money. She wants to make her installments and stuff like that. But in the midst of all that, she gets a ticket to go away. You know, when you go away, what, the main thing that you need is what? Mula. The Nero. You need money. To have fun when you go on vacations. All right? So what happened? Her mom decided to work extra. So normally, Indira starts at 10 o'clock, so she was taking jobs that were starting at 8 o'clock at times. Just to make extra money so she can send for her daughter. Why? Because a wise mother will make sacrifices to serve her family. And I'm sure every one of us here this morning can look back at our mom and see all the sacrifices that they made for us. So for us to be where we are today was because of the sacrifice that a mother made. Let's give it up for the moms. I'll tell you. They are incredible human beings. I could go on. If, if I was to talk about the sacrifices that my mom made, we'd be here for weeks. We would be here for weeks. Amen. So the third point is this. Is that a wise mother will do whatever it takes to also to provide. And we saw that. Right? For her family. Right? She's taking care of her home. And this wise woman here in Proverbs 31, she's taking care of her home. And she is working. Which is interesting, because you would think back in Bible days that all they did was they stayed at home, right? And the men worked. We have that idea, but let me tell you, this wise woman, she was working and taking care of the home. She had at least four, according to this passage of scripture, she had at least four sources of income. And I want to pray for that. I'm going to say that up front. I want to pray for that. That the moms in this house, all the women in this house, that you will have at least four sources of income. Yeah. And I think that's God's design too. Even when we look at the Garden of Eden, there was four rivers that flowed into Eden. And I think that because God wants us to have at least four sources of income. Four sources, so four resources coming into our life. All right? So I want to pray at the end of the, at the, end of the service for, for God to give you ideas, for God to open up doors so that you will have four sources of income. Can I hear an amen? Amen? And the men will enjoy that too. Let's say. Amen. But let's look at that. Let's look at that. Look at verse. Look at verse. Let's, let's begin here. Um, as we saw earlier, that, that she was like a merchant chip. She, she went out and did trade. So that was one source of income. Look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. It says that she considers a field and buy it. Who bought it? She did. Not her husband. She chose to buy the field. So you know what? This woman was into real estate. Right? So that was her source of income right there. She was, she was in the real estate. First one was that she was trading. Look at, look, look at, look at, look. Let's go on. It says, go back up. Verse 16. It says, she considers the field and buys it. And her profits, 
She plants a vineyard. She didn't plant yam and potatoes and tomatoes and okra, pigeon peas. You know, she had all that because that is what they would have done in those days to provide for their family. Right? They would plant produce to provide for their family, but she didn't only have produce, she planted a vineyard. Why? Because from a vineyard, you can make wine. So she was all, and, and come on, how much wine is your family going to drink? No, she was selling. She had extra. She, prof, she took the profits, planted a vineyard so she could produce wine to sell wine. See? That was another source of income. Look at verse 24. Go to verse 24. It says, she, she makes linen garments and what? Sells them and supply sashes for the merchants. Isn't that interesting? So she was trading. She was into real estate. She was selling wine and she was making clothes to sell. She had four sources of income. I want to pray that God will give you guys ideas today to give you four sources of income. How much of you women, you guys are ready for that? Four sources of income. Amen. This is what she did. This is what she did. Amen. So she provided, she made sacrifices. She got into business so she can provide for her family. Point number four. A wise mom also takes care of herself. Let me say that again. A wise mom takes care of herself. Amen? Look at verse 17. It says she girds herself with what? With what? With strength and strengthen her. Come, she was working out. She was working out. She was, she was in a gym. She was getting herself strong. Let me say this overall. God wants us to be strong. God always works through strength and knowledge. The enemy is who works through weakness and ignorance. God wants us to be strong. That's why he said, let the weak say, I am. He wants us to be strong. Amen? She was taking care of herself. She was exercising. And not only that, look at verse 22. It says she makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen. Come on. Fine linen. And purple. <laughs> she looked royal. That's what it was. She looked like royalty. So she took care of herself and she also wanted to look good. A wise mother would look good. Guys, it's okay to look good. Amen? You know, it's interesting. When you look at what happened to us in the last two years with COVID-19, most of the people who died from COVID-19 died because they had underlying health issues. Is God again showing us the importance of staying healthy? Most of the people who died either had problems with high blood pressure, heart issues, lung issues, 
they, they probably were overweight. Come on, guys, we saw. So let's be what? Wise and get healthy. Look at the scripture. There's an interesting scripture. Mark 12 and verse 30. You know, we read over this and we don't notice this very often. It says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. How much of you guys have heard that before? And with what? With all your soul. That's your mind, will, and emotions. And with all, with, with, with all your mind, your intellect. But look what it says here. And with all your what? With all your what? With all your strength. God wants you to be strong. Your strength becomes something that you can offer to him. Do you know that God wants us to live long? He wants to bless us with long life. But we're not going to live long if we are weak and feeble. So we have, to, we have to worship him. We have to love him with our strength. We have to get stronger. Pastor Kirk, you have to start walking. I can hear the thoughts of my wife. And this is no joke, guys. You know, we look, we, we, we look at Jesus, right? Who is our example? Do you know that the theologians worked out by the, 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 the walks that he did? Going here to this village, that, to, that, to this village, to that town, up this mountain. They worked out in his 33 years of living that he walked around the entire world in distance. And he, was just, he only lived to 33. That's how much walking he did. Jesus was fit. Amen? Let me pull this in this morning. <laughs> Amen. Let, let, let's, let's do that this year. Let's get, let's get healthier this year. Amen. Let's do it. Come on. You got to look good. You got to look good. My wife bought this linen shirt for me. Why? Well, she wants me to look good. Do you know who bought this pants for me? My 76-year-old mom. For real. We, we were going to a store in New York. Um, it was this year or last? Maybe last. I think it was last year. And she said, Cook, I think you look good in this. I said, come on, mom. Come on. <laughs> Amen. So, mom, you got to buy some of these too. This one. <laughs> 76 granny and some bus of jeans. Distress. <laughs> come on. It's all right. It's okay to look good. Amen? We got to get out of our mentality. We got to look like old Mother Hubbard kids. All right. We got to look good. You know, Jesus wore stuff. I'm just not part of my notes. But Jesus wore stuff that was so, that was so good that at, at his death, they, they, they bid for it. People don't bid for rags. Start believing God for good stuff. Look at verse 26. To know God's word. You see that? So a wise woman is going to be hungry to know God or to know his word. Again, God moves to strength and knowledge. The enemy moves to weakness and ignorance. So woman, if you want to be a wise mom, if you want to be a wise woman, You've got to get into God's word. Amen. Her mouth was filled with wisdom. Law of kindness came out of her tongue. In other words, she was teaching even her kids kindness. What's kindness? Kindness is the character of God. If, 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 if there's any day that we need to teach kids how to be kind is today. Hello? 192 what? Come on. Most of those got kids that are doing these crazy things out there. They need to know to be kind, to be loving, to move with godly character. 
It's up to us as wise moms and dads, let's put it out there, to teach our kids to be kind. To be loving, to care. Amen. And this is where a lot of parents dropped the ball in the past. And one of the reasons that they have to fall in love again with the word of God. So they can teach the word of God to their kids. Show their kids the kindness of God. Amen. Number six. <clears throat> Another characteristic here of a wise mom is that she is generous with the poor and the needy. Look at verse 20 and 21. It says, she extends her hands to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. So she took care of them. But look at it. It said that she didn't only took care of those in her household, but she even took care of those beyond her household. The poor, the needy. So she was generous. Amen. Let me tell you guys this. We are blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. We got to be generous. And I'm so, I'm so happy... Um, that, 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 that it shows us that here, that she loved people beyond her household. She was, she was, she was thinking about her neighbors. You know, I think about the, 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 the feeding ministry that we have here now. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yesterday, they, they, they served over 60 lunches. 60 people, at least 60 people, right, Paul? Got lunches here yesterday. Why? Because we have to think about the needy. We have to be always be generous. Amen. And I want to encourage you guys. Be part of that program that we have here. We go reaching out to the poor. Bring in your, your food stuff. Every time you go to the grocery, pick up two extra things, tins of this, some dry goods. Bring it to the church. If you, if you don't have that time, you know, with Paul and these guys, uh, they give them the finances. And they're doing good stuff with it. Amen. We got to be generous. Do you know we serve a generous God? <laughs> God so loved that he what? He kept everything in his pocket, right? No, he so loved that he gave. He gave. Amen. That's one thing I also thank my mom for. That's one of her greatest strengths is that she's a giver. I mean, my, my parents, they were never rich, but they were always generous. They were never really rich, but, but they were always generous. They were always willing to give the back, the, the shirt off their backs. I'm serious. I mean, just after last week, my mom was like, what can I send for you? So, you know, <laughs> well, well, a friend of, uh, you know, my, my, my sister's brother-in-law's brother was up there, and he's coming now. My mom wanted to know what to send for me. I said, send some, send some vitamins. You know, she wants, she wants to do something, right? She also wants to give. And, you know, I'm, I'm because of that, I, I, that, past, that, that, that mentality and character has, has passed on to me. I love to give. I love to give. Actually, the Bible says it's much better to give than to receive. You know why? Because if you don't give, you don't receive either. <laughs> just, just saying. It is much better to give. But, but the, the joy that you get from giving, man, it's one of life's greatest pleasures. It's to give and to see the reaction of the person receiving the gift. Amen. My last point is this. Is that a wise mom has a positive outlook on life. A wise mom has a positive outlook on life. Look at I put that verse there. I think it's verse 25. Yeah, verse 25. It says, strength and honor are her 
closing. And look at this part, guys. She shall what? Rejoice in times to come. Give me any other translation that say future. She rejoices, she smiles, she laughs. <laughs> In other words, she doesn't hold, hold her, her head and scream. Are you guys who know what scream means? It means the ball. <laughs> right? She doesn't hold her head and ball. It says, look at this, 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 this the amplified. It says, and she smiles at the future. Look at that. She smiles at the future. Knowing that she and her family are prepared. Amen. She's optimistic about tomorrow. She knows that she serves a good God who's going to provide. She knows she serves a God who's going to give her the grace to, 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 to take care of her family. To be a giver. She's optimistic about tomorrow, guys. She's not part of the doom and gloom crowd. She knows the word of God. Look at Proverbs 4 and verse 18. It says, For, but the part of the just. How many just people here? How many righteous people here? Amen. It says, the part of the just or the part of the righteous is like the shining sun that shines brighter and brighter and brighter <laughs> onto the perfect day. Amen. The part of the righteous becomes brighter, guys. Try this side. The part of the righteous becomes brighter. Things will get better for us. The just, the righteous, those who are in Christ, we have an, an expectant future. Amen. I am looking forward for tomorrow. Guys, let me say, in the end, we win. I just want to say, in the end, we win. Why? Because we, we got married to the winner man. The victor lives inside of us. He has made us more than conquerors. Amen? You know what's more than a conqueror? It's when a conqueror goes out, gets all the goods, and brings it home to you. You are more than a conqueror. I go out there and bring home the goods for her. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to get all those mangoes and stuff for you. You see, stay home and she, <laughs> she, she's more than a conqueror. Amen. <laughs> see, that's what God has made us. We have an expectant future. We have a good future ahead of us, guys. We have a good future ahead of us. And this is a mark of a wise woman. You know, I was thinking about this. You know, the body of Christ is the bride of Christ. So we should have this, this, this mentality also. Of knowing that it, our future is going to be better. As the bride of Christ, of being a wise, the wise woman in the earth. We should be laughing, smiling about tomorrow. Not worried, not scared, not anxious. Amen. Let me tell you guys something. Your attitude determines your altitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. And let's la read the last three verses here again. Verses 20, last three verses. Verses 28 to 30. This is her children. Raise up and call her blessed. Her husband also. And he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, 
she shall be praised. Amen? So these are the characteristics that we see here of a wise mom. And I pray that every mom here will grow in these characteristics. Amen? I'm sure, I am sure you already have many functioning in you and I'm sure you have a good example from your mom. So we can do it. We can provide a better future for those around us. We can provide a better future for this nation. Amen? Let's stand.